I am a Notion power user. I use this app to organize every domain of my life. I have a page for dating, for fitness, for personal finance and yearly goals. I also use Notion to plan out my week with a task list. And at the end of each day, I return to Notion to reflect in my journal. Notion is the super minimalist app I always wanted for personal productivity. And this video is about five ways how Notion has utterly failed me. Many years ago when I watched Brené Brown's famous TED talk, The Power of Vulnerability, I learned for the first time that vulnerability can be the birthplace of innovation, creativity, and change. So I opened up Notion to write this down and I was immediately paralyzed. Which page does this belong to? Vulnerability can help me with my dating life, but it's also more of a general attitude towards life that can improve our emotional well-being. So maybe fitness? And should I put this in a blog quote or a call out? And which emoji best represents vulnerability? Time and time again, I find myself stuck trying to notionize what I just learned, and I end up wasting so much time on it instead of actually going out to learn more things. Maybe I'm just not using Notion the right way, but what if, what if there is a better tool out there? This is my girlfriend, Erica. As a resident, she knows a thing or two about learning massive, like massive amounts of information in a very short amount of time. So my first question is, do you use Notion? Do I use Notion? No. I have looked through hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps for note taking and organizing information and never found anything that fit everything that I wanted. I have always found handwriting notes is the best way to learn. The problem with that is you end up with lots of notebooks everywhere. So I decided to try one of these, which is a super note. It allows me to continue to handwrite, but it allows me to organize that information so you can quickly scribble down a note, you know, during a conference. Being able to have an easy way to find information and organize information without losing the physical act of, of writing, I think is really significant. Of the e-ink tablets, the Supernote is not the most recommended for drawing. That being said, I do quite a bit of little, brief little sketches to illustrate concepts, learning surgeries, so trying to illustrate different steps of surgeries. Again, it's, it's not so much the drawing itself, but the act of drawing that is useful, and the drawings are, you know, sufficient enough to, for me to know what's going on, because <laughs> I made them. Notion isn't just a note-taking app, it is also a personal planner that's supposed to help you execute on your goals. There are a million different ways in Notion for you to state your intentions, with templates for yearly goals, task lists, and reading lists. And you can feel so productive filling out all these tables, but when it comes to actually taking action, Notion is pretty terrible at keeping you accountable for it. What you really need is a checkbox. Read a book, work out, practice guitar, and only when you actually do the thing can you check it off and move forward in life. Notion obviously has checkboxes, but there are three key features it's missing. The first one is the concept of repeating checkboxes after you check them off. Reading a book is something I want to do every other day in my life. In fact, so many things in life require you to do it over and over again to reap the benefits. It's foundational to how you grow as a person. It's a huge time waster if I have to recreate these checkboxes every single time. But if I don't create these checkboxes, it's just so easy to forget about it. I can go for months without reading a book. That has never happened ever since I started using an app that supports repeating checkboxes after checking them off. The second feature is the accessibility of the checkbox list itself. What is the point of creating all these checkboxes if you're never going to see them? The app I use has a home screen widget that lets me see all my empty checkboxes every time I pick up my phone. And finally, these checkboxes need to be easily maneuverable. It shouldn't take you more than three taps to move a checkbox from one date to another. I try to keep my number of daily checkboxes under 10, and when I move them, it's usually to a date that's within the next two weeks, so they come back to me in short order. Checking off these checkboxes will move you forward in life more effectively than any number of Notion pages. So Notion is well known for its organizational structure, and I won't dispute this because Notion is excellent at storing a hierarchy of information. So here I have folders for taxes, for receipts, and for insurance. Now these are things I don't want to remember, but I might still need this information at least once a year. And with Notion, you can easily jump to the information without wasting time ruffling through all your papers. But this kind of information tends to be a very small part of your real life. When was the last time you had to tell a friend about your taxable income in 2016? 
Probably never. Most things in life don't require you to search through a file system. Imagine how painful life would be if you had to look up a dictionary before you speak every word. This is probably why most people give up on trying to learn a second language. Our brains are probably not modeled after the notion of hierarchy. It's more likely that our brains act like a network, and the way we organize information is by connecting it to as many other pieces of information as possible. For example, the reason I know my mother so well is not because of her taxonomy of being a human female birth giver, it is because of the decades of random memories we share together. Whenever I use chopsticks, I reinforce knowledge of my mother because she taught me how to use it. If I was to model my mom in Notion, she would probably be nested under cooking utensils, chopsticks. It doesn't make any sense. There are better apps out there modeled after the way our brain actually works. In March of 2020, Shida Lee and Erica Xu from the University of Waterloo released an app called Obsidian. It's a minimalist note-taking app where you can link any note you write to any other note you wrote. The thing I love most about Obsidian is that it keeps me hyper-focused on recording new knowledge. Whenever I write a new note, I'm honed in on how it links to all the other notes I've written. And I might even revisit those other notes and link them back to my new note. Maybe you can relate to this, but sometimes you write all these notes in life, but you never go back to read them again, and you're like, what's the point? Obsidian. Obsidian somehow got me to go back and review my notes, and just that by itself is magical. If you want to know more about how I actually format my notes in Obsidian, let me know in the comments below, but for this video, I'm not quite done complaining about Notion just yet. Notion sucks for privacy. We live in an age where it's become normalized to expose our data. Essentially, any employee at Notion can read anything you write into Notion, and if they get hacked, any hackers can read that information. A lot of us feel like these things are outside of our control, and we either try to convince ourselves that our data is not important, or we hope for regulations to help protect us. But I'm here to tell you that these notions are outdated. We now live in a landscape where end-to-end -end encryption technology exists, to prevent snoopers from using your data without permission. I choose apps with end-to-end -end encryption whenever possible for a variety of use cases. I use Day One for my journals. I use Proton Mail for my email. I use Obsidian for my notes. As someone who journals on a daily basis on intimate topics, I realize that the things I write are less about who I am and more about how I think. Journaling is like a therapeutic technique to help me process my thoughts. But if your writings get leaked to advertisers, they couldn't care less. A single leaked journal entry about how it sucks to be single in Silicon Valley is enough to forever brand you as the target demographic for a Bumble lifetime boost. And at some point, you might even be brainwashed into thinking, oh yeah, $150 for a dating app feature that used to be free. That makes total sense. Even with end-to-end -end encryption, our data can still be leaked through social media and internet service providers but the least we can do is protect our journal entries. One small step for our privacy, one giant leap for our sanity. So Notion failed at meeting my expectations as the one app to rule them all, but Notion is still good at being Notion. The core of Notion is that it's an aesthetically beautiful app. There are times in my life when I don't care about efficiency or privacy, and I just want to create a pretty page I can share with my friends. Notion is the perfect tool for creating mood boards or collaborating on a vacation plan or anything that requires a variety of colors, layouts, and media. I get physically excited when I see a well-made Notion page with all its emojis. And I can't name any other app that made me feel this way. But as important as these feelings are and as real as they are, feelings are sometimes just temporary lapses in judgment. As digital minimalists, we must be mindful about choosing the right tools for the right intentions. Thank you for making it to the end. My name is Alan. I make videos about how to shift your life towards minimalism and intentional living. If there are any other specific topics you want me to cover in a future video, let me know in the comments below, and I will see you next time.